<laughs> wow, that book really didn't want to do my thing. Uh, welcome back to The Average. If you're new here, hey, I'm Steph. I'm The Average Artist and we paint on books over here. This video is sponsored by Zyro. Zyro is a powerful and super affordable web builder which is incredibly easy to use even if the technology drives you crazy. You can create a website in minutes starting from less than $3 a month with a 30 day money back guaranteed and a 24 seven support line. For the Black Friday deal, the cheapest plan will cost $1.71 per month. It is a promotion code at the bottom in my link in bio and I want you guys to check it out because you can get a limited time deal which will be up to 86% off and three months free with the yearly plan. Use the code TheAverageArtist or click on the link down below. I use Zyro to create a fun little portfolio site for myself and it was so easy and quick to use. I really enjoyed working around the navigation of this site and I think it is pretty foolproof. So check it out please guys and thanks to Zyro for sponsoring this video. Um. I'm doing this thing where I paint over movie book covers because I hate them and I think they are disgusting. <laughs> wow, I went in hard there. They're not disgusting, I just don't like them compared to normal book covers. And yeah, I think we should just get into it because you've been here before and let's go. I have a certain soft spot for Artemis Fowl because I remember it was a book that I used to read a lot or listen to in fact on tapes if anyone remembers what those are when I was a kid to fall asleep and I really liked the book I really liked the story I always thought maybe Artemis Fowl will fall in love with a fairy in it and <laughs> and then now I'm like that's so stupid as a 10 year old or however old I was I thought yes it's gonna be a love story but no of course not that's just weird I think because Artemis Fowl is posed as such an adult in the books, but he's not. He's a kid as well, but he's a genius. Oh, maybe I should go back a bit. If you guys don't know what Artemis Fowl is about, it's about a boy genius who wants to discover the fairyland and the people who live underground in this network of different magical beings, shall we say, and yes, um... He manages to find one because he wants to help his sick mother. So you think he's kind of like an evil genius boy. But in the end there is kind of like a soft undercore of like a kid in there. Which is the overall arc of his character. And I thought what I would do is... Originally I sketched out an, a, a fairy flying out. And I just... A fairy flying out? Well, like a fairy. And I just didn't like the idea of that. So I went back to the drawing board and I was thinking what I could do. So for this particular illustration, I got a lot of inspiration from early 20th century like illustrations and fantastical things like that. If you look on Pinterest and look at these illustrations, they're so nice. Particularly, I stumbled upon an artist called Sidney Herbert Syme and his art is like stunning and it's mythical and it's really impressive for the time. It's like a really, I don't know, enchanting way of painting and he used lots of oil painting which is kind of making me want to try out oils again even though they scare me completely because his work was just so magical and fantastical. I wanted to emulate that a lot on this uh, drawing, painting, and I think I succeeded in that. I took a lot of inspiration from his work and then found similar artworks on Pinterest. I made like a whole board, and then obviously I made it my own and I sketched out different features that I wanted and I just went with it and had fun with it and I just really enjoyed this piece and I think it's actually one of my favourite book covers that I've ever done. I think I'm really starting to enjoy painting a lot more with abstract and underpainting and finding colours underneath and layering them up and then, I don't know, just making random shapes and then making them into something. And I'm sure that as you're watching this, you're probably thinking, what on earth is she painting? Like, what is that? But as we go on and I develop the painting and concentrate on a certain area a lot more, I think or I hope rather that it becomes clear what is here and what the overall composition is. I get a lot of comments being like I look at your art and uh, it looks like a load of mess and then out of the mess something happens and trust me as a person doing it I feel that 
tenfold like I look at this for at least an hour into the painting like what is this is this gonna turn out good so I hope if you guys learn anything from me is to just stick with something it always has an ugly stage and always has a stage where you're like is this gonna turn out the way I want and yeah it will you just need to keep focusing on it if you spend time on something it's obviously gonna get better so all that needs is time sometimes of course there are always the cases of when things are just not you can't save them so I think it's up to the artist's discretion to decide when what painting is gonna get through the ugly phase or when it's just plain ugly Luckily for me, for this one, I decided to keep pushing through because I knew in my head what I wanted and I had sketched out the overall composition and I had a lot of great inspiration to look at and think. And that's kind of how I want to be. That's like the level I want it to be at. Obviously, I'm not saying that I reached that level because this uh, artwork that these people have done is far superior to my little book painting but it's kind of so nice to look at other stuff and just think I really like that about that piece of work and try to incorporate it into your own work. I know that might sound a bit like copying but it's not because what you're doing is being inspired by something and you're making it your own. So it's like looking at a piece of landscape and thinking I really like that about the landscape and then bring it into your own um, drawing and then making it your own if that makes sense. It's all about using and inspire, being inspired by other artists and I think this piece is such a particular style that I had to point out that yes, I was inspired by early 20th century illustrators, probably mostly American. But yeah, this is really nice. If you look up his work on Pinterest then you'll see loads of images that sort of connect to his works and you'll see like I looked at Irish mythology I don't know why that just popped into my head and I looked at Irish mythology and all the kind of old works that surrounded that and it was really nice to just research something or just look at a completely different style as well because I think I've been sort of set in my ways and to think okay how can I make something interesting how can I branch out and try to do something a little bit different really helped me to develop into making this piece which I think is my favourite piece uh, on a book cover that I've ever done. I mean I recently did um, Shadow of the Wind which I really liked as well which is kind of a similar style to this in the sense that it's sort of impressionistic and it just reads as something whereas it's not like perfect painting which I don't really like people who do like realism well not that I hate people who do realism I don't particularly like realism myself so that is something that I never really want to accomplish in my art because that's what I don't enjoy personally and I think everybody should like consume what they enjoy so for me I don't really like realism so much I mean I can have attempted it on some times and I wouldn't say that I'm very good at it but then it's maybe because that's something that I've never really delved truly into or wanted to be completely consumed by. So this is the overall painting and I hope you guys can clearly see what it's supposed to be now. I added the mansion in the background on a hill in the book, it takes place mostly in um, Artemis Fowl's family home, which is a huge mansion. And I thought what I could do is just have these mythical, magical elements around and these puff of smokes as if that's like the, the fairies or the mythical creatures arriving because I think they teleport in. So this is like my interpretation of that. So it's sort of signifying what could be in the book rather than just showing a clear scene which is always a piece of advice that I stumbled upon and want to remind people of is when you do a book cover you don't want to have a particular scene in your head you want to keep it fairly generic so that it interests the audience but also makes them want to pick up the book because of the content on the cover but yeah that's it
and that is the final look of Artemis Fowl and yes I think this is probably one of my favorites that I've ever done I'm not sure what do you guys think like do you think this is the one of the best ones I really like it and I really think it sort of depicts the magic and the drama and kind of the spirit of the book a little bit more than having a picture of the guy who plays Artemis Fowl although that was okay it's just that I really like this book and I think it looks really cool so let me know what you guys think and please leave a comment down below and please like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already that would be really really awesome and I hope to see you guys next time also thank you to Zyro for sponsoring this video thanks everybody for watching and I hope to see you next time bye